Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, today's paper is going to be end-to-end -end LSCM based dialogue control optimized with uh, supervised and reinforcement learning. It's a long title. Okay. Here is the outline. First, I will go through an introduction. Uh, then we would see what is the proposed model of this paper and how can we train this model using supervised and reinforcement learning. And finally, the conclusion. Okay, first off, let's see what is the problem that this paper want to tackle. This paper proposes uh, an end-to-end -end trainable model for task-oriented dialogue systems. And task-oriented dialogue systems are different from uh, open domain dialogue systems in the sense that they are designed to complete some specific tasks uh, using some template sentences. An example for a task-oriented dialogue system could be a system for initiating a phone call to a contact in an address book. In this case, uh, the user may say, call Jason, and then the system answers uh, which type of phone, mobile or work, and then finally, a phone call is initiated. Other examples could be ordering a taxi or reserving a table at a restaurant. Uh, the authors of this paper use the first example, in fact, the dialogue system in the first example, to test their model. In their setting, a contact's name may have some synonyms like Mike and Michael, and a user may have more than one phone number. I will explain the experimental results uh, in the following slides in more details. Okay, we can cast this problem as a reinforcement learning problem in which the state is consisted of the user's goal and uh, the dialogue history. User's goal in our example is, uh, for instance, the name of the person and the type of the phone. And the dialogue history is, uh, for example, whether a specific information is asked or confirmed or not. Uh, actions could be either text actions, like uh, do you want to call followed by a name entity, or an API call for example, to initiate a phone call to a specific name. Uh, reward here is one uh, if we successfully complete the task and it is zero otherwise. <clears throat> uh, two main contributions of this paper are first, a change to the dialogue history in which they extract automatically a representation for the dialogue history without any manual hand engineering. So this is the first contribution of this paper. And the other contribution is uh, introducing uh, API calls to the actions. So in this case, the developers can easily encode their business rules or logics into the system uh, using these API calls. OK, and now let's see what is the model. This is the overall architecture of their model. Uh, this is consisted of 13 different parts, which I will explain every one of them in a moment. Uh, but at a very high level, this architecture is consisted of three major components. The first one is a language understanding module, which is the entity extraction. And it just extracts uh, the entities in the text. Uh, the other part is this. Uh, green parallelogram. So these are the software or the code provided by the developers. Uh, and you can think of them as some uh, domain specific functions. The other important part is the recurrent neural network, which is here uh, an LSTM network. And they show in their work that the recurrency here is very important. If we simply replace this uh, LSTM network with a non stateful deep neural network, then the model is not capable of uh, completing the tasks or even uh, reconstruct the training set. So it is very important to have either an LSTM network or a recurrent neural network. And they cast uh, this uh, as a future work to see which one of them are better for this model. OK. The first part of this model is the user input. So this could be a type text or a text recognized from user speech. And this text is given as input to the entity extraction module. So the task of this module is to extract the entities of the text. For instance, if the user input is called Jason Williams, in that case, uh, 
the entity extraction module would extract JSON Williams and label it as a name entity. The third part is uh, entity input, which is a code provided by the developers. So the task of this module is to map from the extracted entity to a row of a database. So in our example, if uh, we could find Jason Williams in the database, then the output of this module is that, okay, there is a match to the name, and for example, Jason Williams has two phone numbers in the database. Uh, in the next part, we concatenate the outputs of four different modules in this model, like uh, the entity extraction module, the entity input module, and two others that I will explain later, and form a feature vector. So this feature vector is the concatenation of the output of four different modules here, and this is used as the input of the LSTM network. So here we have an LSTM network, which takes as input the feature vector and it maps from raw input data like the words of the input text to a distribution over all actions. So uh, this would update its internal state and use a softmax layer to produce a distribution over all actions. So here we have uh, a probability for each of the actions. In part six, we have an action mask, uh, which is again a code provided by the developers. And the responsibility of this module is to uh, mask some of the actions. For instance, if we couldn't find Jason Williams in the database, in that case, the action of uh, initiating a phone call should be inactive. And they mask that action by uh, putting the probability of that action to zero. In that case, we make sure that this action is not going to be selected uh, in this time step. So here, uh, we can set the probability of that actions to zero. And because of this change, the output is not a distribution anymore. So we need to renormalize that vector to have a distribution in part eight. So after renormalizing the output of the LSTM network, uh, we would have a distribution uh, over the available actions. Next, we would use that distribution to select an action. And this uh, depends on whether we are doing reinforcement learning or supervised learning. If we are doing reinforcement learning because we have to have a kind of exploration, in that case, we sample from this distribution to select an action. But if we are doing supervised learning, in that case, we just pick the action with the highest probability. So we simply just uh, act greedily with respect to the distribution in part eight. Anyways, after this step, we would have an action. And this action is given to the entity output module, which is again a code from the developer side. And the task of this module is to uh, substitute the entity names with the entity values. So in our case, it would replace uh, name entity with Jason Williams. So at the end of this part, we have an action, which is uh, either a text action or an API call. And we have this control branch here, and it checks whether the action is a text action so that it can uh, output that text to the user, and the user can see that text, for example, office or cell phone, or if it is an, an API call, then uh, the system would in, invoke that API call, and the output would be used in the feature vector in part four uh, to be used as the input of the LSTM network. So after this part, we just cycle over this uh, network, and uh, we repeat this cycle until we complete the task. Okay, and now we have uh, the model and we need to train this model. How can we train this model? Before explaining how can we train this model, let's see a, a real world scenario in which we have a new agent, for instance, in a call center, and we wanna train that new agent. Uh, what happens probably is that uh, we would ask an experienced agent or a teacher to show some information regarding how to look up a customer's information or uh, how to confirm a customer's identity, 
And after this step, we would uh, presumably uh, show the new agent some examples, some successful examples of dialogues so that the agent can imitate. And finally, we would let the agent to directly interact with the users and learn through experience. The authors of this paper uh, follow the same uh, scenario in which they first ask the developers to provide some code to the system, like the action masking code or the API calls, and then they would uh, use some uh, good examples and successful dialogues to train their models uh, using uh, supervised learning. And finally, they let the model to interact uh, with a simulated user uh, and learns through reinforcement learning. So in the case of a uh, simulated user, uh, it randomly selects a name and a phone type, uh, which could be out of the database, and it starts the conversation, so that the agent can learn from the reward signal while doing the conversation. OK, now let's see how can we train the model using supervised learning. In this case, the loss is a categorical cross-entropy loss. And their data set uh, consists of uh, 21 written dialogues, which covers different scenarios, like the case where we have single or multiple matches to a name, or where uh, the user has more than uh, one phone number. And then they use 1, 2, 5, 10, or 20 dialogues of that database uh, of that data set uh, for their training set and use one held out dialog for their test set. On the right side, you can see the graph for the results of supervised learning. Uh, as you can see, if we only use one dialog for training, uh, then the turn level accuracy is around 70%. But if we use 20 dialogues, then this would rise to uh, around 90%. And in that case, the dialogue level accuracy is nearly 50%. And we consider a dialogue to be uh, accurate if there is no uh, prediction errors in that dialogue. OK. Next, they introduce uh, active learning into their work. Uh, what is active learning? Uh, active learning is basically used to reduce the number of uh, required labels uh, to achieve a certain level of performance. And how does active learning work? We first uh, run the current model on some unlabeled instances, and then uh, the unlabeled instances for which the model is most uncertain are labeled, and then we use those labels to rebuild the model. And this cycle repeats. So this is active learning. But in order to have an effective active learning, the scores of the model should be a good indicator of the correctness, i.e., the model should be confident. Fortunately, in our case, 80% uh, of the actions with the lowest scores are inaccurate. And on the other hand, the LSTM network is, uh, could be trained and updated very fast. So uh, we can conclude that by labeling low scoring actions, uh, we can improve the performance very rapidly. So that's why active learning is a good fit for the model. And now, how can we optimize our uh, model using reinforcement learning? They use policy gradient in their work, and they update the weights using this expression. Uh, here, w is the weights of the LSTM network, and pi is the output of the LSTM network. Uh, it produces a distribution over all actions at time step t based on the dialogue history at time t, which is ht, and the previous weights. Then this is multiplied by the capital R minus b. R here is the return of the dialogue, and b is a baseline. So intuitively here, uh, we would have a positive gradient step if we have a good uh, dialogue, and in that case, we make uh, the actions in that dialogue are uh, more likely to happen. And if we have a bad dialogue, we would have negative gradient steps, and we make the selected actions in that dialogue less likely to happen. Uh, here we can see the evaluation of reinforcement learning. Uh, as you can see, we have different curves here, which correspond to the number of uh, 
dialogues that we use in the supervised learning phase before starting the reinforcement learning. And this number goes from 0 to 10. If it is 0, it means that we don't do any supervised learning beforehand, and we just start uh, reinforcement learning uh, on the initial LSTM model. Uh, in that case, you can see in the black curve that the mean of task completion rate is not high enough. And on the right side, you can see it has also a very high uh, standard deviation. But if we use 10 dialogues uh, to train our model in the supervised learning phase, then we would get the blue curve in which uh, we have a very high mean of uh, task completion rate and a pretty low uh, standard deviation. Uh, now we can come to the conclusion that this paper has taken uh, the first steps towards an end-to-end -end trainable model for task-oriented dialogue systems. Uh, the LSTM uh, network automatically extracts and infers uh, a representation for the dialogue history without any handcrafting. Uh, in point three, uh, we saw that the code provided by the developers could be used to encode uh, business rules or logics easily into the system. And we also saw that this model could be trained using both supervised learning and reinforcement learning. As we saw in the experimental results, if we use uh, even a very small number of dialogues in the supervised learning phase, we can get a reasonable policy and a pretty high accuracy. And if we use this model as the initial model uh, for the reinforcement learning optimization, this would accelerate the reinforcement learning optimization substantially. Okay, that was my presentation. Thank you.